My MOOF University YouTube videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. If you'd like to pay for the use of the videos, visit my website at moofuniversity.com, click on the pay-what-you-like link at the top of the page, and follow the instructions on that page. Thank you and enjoy. So in this video I want to talk about the hormonal control of acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Of course we've already mentioned um, the regulation in the previous video, but we're going to talk specifically about how hormones play a role in this regulation here. So let's consider two different scenarios. So the first scenario is you are, you, a healthy, normal individual, wake up after an excellent 10-hour sleep, and you're going to go to have a workout before you eat an amazing breakfast that a world-class chef is preparing for you. Sounds like a pretty awesome morning, in my opinion. Anyway, so you just woke up from a 10-hour sleep, so that means that you are in the fasted state. And if you are in the fasted state, what's going to be true is that you're going to have fairly low blood glucose levels that um, are being maintained. Your, your glucose levels are going to be maintained at a normal but fairly low, relatively low um, level. And you're also going to have uh, low glycogen stores because they'll be depleted um, from anything that you might have used um, in, in, during your fast. Now, in the fasted state, what is the dominant hormone? And the dominant hormone is glucagon in the fasted state. So um, glucagon is the dominant hormone in the fasted state, and that's actually what is maintaining your blood glucose levels. So when this is the case, you have low blood glucose levels, low glycogen stores, what will your body use for energy during your workout? Well, it's going to be using fatty acids. So, and how it's going to be using them specifically is that beta oxidation will be occurring to break down those fatty acids for energy. So, if this is the case, if we're using, in fact, um, just as a general note, that fatty acids are sort of a long-term long um, energy source. So, um, especially if you have a, a workout that's going to like uh, involve some aerobic exercise, uh, your fatty acids are going to be used. So, beta oxidation will be happening. Um, so, if that's the case, do we want fatty acid synthesis to be active? Well, if beta oxidation is occurring, then no, right? We don't want to have both fatty acid synthesis and beta oxidation occurring at the same time. That wouldn't make any sense. Now, if this is the case, if we're in the fasted state, glucagon is the dominant hormone. We're using fatty acids for energy via beta oxidation. We don't want fatty acid synthesis active. What will glucagon? What do you expect glucagon to be doing to acetyl-CoA carboxylase? Well, if acetyl-CoA carboxylase is a committed enzyme to fatty acid synthesis, and we don't want fatty acid synthesis to be occurring when glucagon's around, so glucagon will inhibit it. It'll inhibit acetyl-CoA carboxylase. What does glucagon actually do? Um, well, it drives fatty acids to be used as fuel in the fasted state. They're a long-term energy source, and um, when you're fasting, that's when you, your body's primary source of energy is, is, uh, is fatty acids. Um, now, epinephrine, uh, not exactly the same thing, although it kind of works along with glucagon. Epinephrine is a um, is like the the hormone that you might have heard is associated with the uh, fight or flight response. And essentially what that's referring to is that it's the fight, in the fight or flight response you need an immediate, you need energy immediately. So epinephrine is used to satisfy immediate energy needs. And what it does is it, it amplifies the glucagon's effect um, on mobilizing fatty acids. So it, it further perpetuates what glucagon is already doing. So they kind of work together in that sense. So as a, as a sort of uh, all-inclusive summary of what glucagon and epinephrine are doing together is glucagon and epinephrine, let's erase all of this, uncover the hidden message. Glucagon and epinephrine are both catabolic hormones, right? They're breaking down these fatty acids, or they're involved in breaking down these fatty acids, that work together in the fasted state to mobilize fatty acids to be used for energy. Okay, so we just mentioned that. As such, they favor acetyl-CoA carboxylase to be in the inactive state, which is the phosphorylated state, inhibiting fatty acid synthesis from occurring. So, what that looks like up here is that if they want um, the carboxylase to be inactive, they don't want fatty acid synthesis to occur, what are they going to do? Are they going to increase protein phosphatase 2A's activity or AMP activated protein kinases activity. Well, which one inactivates the carboxylase? The AMP activated protein kinase. So the activity of that enzyme will be increased 
by glucagon and epinephrine. Okay, cool. Second scenario. In the second scenario, right after your workout, you grub on your post-workout feast like a ferocious beast, and you've consumed plenty of macronutrients, including carbs, protein, and fat. So in this case, you're in the fed state, right? So if you just ate, your blood glucose levels are going to be high, right? And in this case, in this scenario, the dominant hormone is insulin. Insulin is the dominant hormone in this case. So what insulin is going to do is it's going to lower blood glucose levels and increase energy storage. So, uh, so do we want fatty acid synthesis to be active if we just ate, if insulin is the dominant hormone? Well, yeah, right? We want to store all the energy that we just ate, right? So, um, so we're going to store the fat, any fat, fatty acids as triglycerides. So, what will insulin do to acetyl-CoA carboxylase? Well, we just said that if it's going to activate fatty acid synthesis, we want this carboxylase to be active. So, it's going to activate it. So, what does insulin do? Insulin drives the storage of energy, including the storage of fatty acids as triglycerides. So that's just reiterating what I just said. So now what's the uh, little summary of what's going on with insulin? Uncover the hidden message. So insulin, unlike glucagon and epinephrine, is an anabolic hormone. And it dominates in the fed state to store consumed energy. Right? It's part of the reason it lowers blood glucose levels. Right? It increases the uptake of blood glucose and all of that. So, as such, it favors acetyl-CoA carboxylase to be in the active or non-phosphorylated state, activating fatty acid synthesis. So if we look up here, fatty acid synthesis, right, is done by this, or committed to by this carboxylase enzyme, this active one. So we want this active one to be around. And which, which of these um, enzymes favors this is protein phosphatase 2A gets, gets rid of this phosphate to give us this... Um, this active form enzyme, and that's what we want. That's what insulin, well, at least that's what insulin wants, right? So the activity of this protein phosphatase 2A is increased by insulin so as to activate the carboxylase, allowing fatty acid synthesis to occur. So the overall summary is simply that glucagon and epinephrine, they inhibit acetyl-CoA carboxylase and fatty acid synthesis, while insulin activates acetyl-CoA carboxylase and fatty acid synthesis. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching.